Hey y'all. Well, I hope that YouTube is a liar, but I don't think it is um, because it's saying that my last video only has 34 views. I have 140 students. So, um, I'm going to make this video, but I may change it up next week because I don't know that I'm going to keep making videos for, let me see what percent of that of my students it is. That's only 25% of my students, not even 25%. So we might do some Ed videos or Khan Academy or something different because if y'all aren't going to watch these videos, I guess I'm wasting my time. So I'm going to make this one, then maybe we'll reevaluate next week. All right, okay, so the volume of this. Okay, so we have a pyramid. Again, we're looking for the volume. The formula has still got that big B, which is the area of the base. The difference is it's one third. Okay, if this base right here is a rectangle, which it is, this would be like not an entire rectangular prism. It's only one third of that rectangular prism. So if I had a rectangular prism that had a base that was a 10 by 11, that means I could fit three of these inside that rectangular prism. So I'm only going to take a third of that, but you do it exactly the same way. So to find the area of a rectangle, you're just doing length times width. So just 10 times 11, 10 times 11 is 110. Then I'm just going to say the area is one third. Big B, which is 110. The height runs from the center to that vertex. So that is 16. We plug that in our calculator. That's 586.67 inches cubed. That is how you find the volume of a pyramid. For this one, it's the exact same thing, so I'm not going to show that one. Now, on number three, you do have to actually find the height, okay? So, they did not give us the height. They gave us the, isn't that called the lateral height, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to find that by creating a right triangle, okay, that runs through the middle. So if you know that this entire thing is 14, then half of that would be seven. So that would be a leg, and then 25 would be your hypotenuse. So basically I'm taking out a sliver, 25 is a hypotenuse, seven is a leg, and I'm looking for the height, which is an unknown. So then I just do seven squared plus x squared equals 25 squared. So seven squared, is 49, duh, plus x squared, plus 25 squared is 576. I subtract 49, x squared equals um, 576 minus 49, whoops, 576 minus 49, that equals 527. The square root of that, I believe, is did I mess something up? Y'all messed something up. Oh, wait, I messed this up. 25 squared is 625. Sorry, I was trying to use my key and speed things up, and I looked at the wrong thing. So 25 squared is 625, and then you subtract 49. That's what's going to give you 576. The square root of 576 is 24. Okay, perfect. So the height of my pyramid is 24. All right, so to find the base, it is a square, so I can just do 14 squared, or I could have done 14 times 14. Either one is fine. That gives me 196. That's my big B. So one third big B, which is 196, times the height, which is what we just found, 24. Plug that in your calculator and you get 1,568 feet cubed, okay? 
Now, this one, number four, has a different base. If we look at this base, this is a triangular base. To find the area of a triangle, you are doing one half base times height. So to find my base, I have to do one half the base and height, whoops, that's height, of the base. So I'm just looking at this triangle here. They have identified the height of that triangle as 7.5, so that, that's the height, and the base down here is 12. So 1 half 12 times 7.5 is going to be 45. Okay, so that's my big B. Big B is 45. Again, the height is 10. They gave us that, so volume equals 1 third. 45 times 10. 45 times 10, a third of that is 150 millimeters cubed. Okay, and I'm doing this quickly because um, I have a key that I'm just looking at the key, but you would just be typing these things in your calculator. Five and six are also triangles. If we look at this one, you can see that this is a base is a right triangle. Okay, so since the base is a right triangle, you're gonna need the legs. They only gave us one leg. So you have to solve for the other leg using the Pythagorean theorem. 14 squared plus x squared equals the hypotenuse, which is 22.1 squared. I'm going to subtract 14 squared. X squared equals 22.1 squared minus 14 squared is, whoops, you can't see that. Sorry, y'all. 292.41. Then we take the square root of that. So X is going to be 17.1. That is going to be the other leg. That's going to be the base and height of your base. Okay, to find big B, we're looking for one half the base and height of your base triangle. So one half, 14, the height would be 17.1 because again, those are your legs. So together, that's going to be 119.7. That is your big B. So your volume is going to be one third big B and then the height which they identify as 19. You plug that in your calculator. The answer is 758.1 meters cubed. Okay, bottom one. If you look at the bottom one down there, that again is a triangle. It's an equilateral triangle, you guys. So if it's an equilateral triangle, that means that all sides are 10. It also means that all angles are 60. So we need the height of that. So if you know what we're going to be doing, we're going to be taking that equilateral triangle, splitting it here to make a right triangle. So that 10 becomes 5, and we're dealing with a 30, 60, 90. This is 60. We split that one in half. That's 30. Across from x, I'm sorry, across from 30 is x. Across from the 90 is 2x, and then across from this is x square roots of 3. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You could do the Pythagorean theorem, and that would be fine. You could have 5 squared plus your unknown squared equals 10 squared and solve it that way. All I'm going to do, though, is say that the height is going to be 5 square roots of 3. That's going to be the height of my base. I'm looking at this equilateral base down here. Okay, so the height of that is going to be 5 square root of 3. So my big B is going to be 1 half the base and the height. So the base is going to be 10 because all sides are 10. And then the height is what we just found, 5 square roots of 3. Plug that in my calculator. 0.5 times 10, whoops, times 5 square roots of 3. So that is going to be 43.3. Okay, and I use 30, 60, 90, but again, you could have used the Pythagorean theorem if you wanted to. Um, it's totally up to you, whatever you want to do. Okay, volume is going to be one third, 
And then the height they give us is 16. Plug that in your calculator. 230.93 centimeters cubed. Okay. All right. On this second page, we have cones. Okay. Cones are basically the same thing. Again, your big B right here is a circle. To find the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. Okay, so very simple. You're literally just plugging in what you know. Remember, like we talked about yesterday, um, ACT sometimes tells you to leave things in terms of pi. If that's the case, then this is what you're putting in your calculator. And you're just leaving pi out of the situation, okay? And so you would just have one-third times 9 squared times 17. And that is going to be 459 times pi. So that's in terms of pi. And ACT does that a lot because they, they you'll get a different answer if you use the pi button versus using 3.14. So I'm just going to go ahead, though, and multiply that times pi. Sorry. Using my pi button. So that means it's 1,441.99 yards cubed. Okay? So just know the difference between... Um, in terms of pi versus the actual volume, okay? Then you also have this one here, same thing as before. You just take half of that. If they give you a diameter, you just need half of the diameter, same thing. For this one as well, that 27, you just take that 27, you cut it in half. That's going to be 13.5 as the radius, but this one you have to find your height, okay? To find your height of this one, you are going to use the Pythagorean Theorem. 13.5 is a leg. 22.5 is your hypotenuse. So you would be solving for a leg. I'm not going to do that one. I'll show you the key so that you can look at that one. All right, number 10, our applications. If we look at number 10, it says a cone has a volume of 1,309 centimeters cubed. So this is the volume. They want the height of the cone. I'm sorry, the height of the cone is 8. Find the radius. So you just have to work backwards using your formula. So one-third pi, that all stays the same. We don't know our radius. The height is 8. And our volume is 1,309, okay? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by everything except for R squared. That is going to cancel out everybody but R squared. So R squared equals, I just type in my cal calculator, 1,309 divided by, I'm going to put this in parentheses so my calculator doesn't mess it up, one-third times pi times eight, and double close my parentheses. I did that so that this would be divided by all of that, okay? I didn't want my calculator to make a mistake, and so that gives me 156.25 and then I have to take the square root of that. Which is going to give me a radius of 12.5. And it will just be centimeters because a radius is not um, to the second power and it's not to the third power. It's just a measurement, so it's just centimeters. Okay, number 11. Caitlin must build a sand castle in the form of a square pyramid for a project as shown to the left. She bought three bags of sand, each containing 1,200 inches cubed of sand. Will she have enough to build the castle? Okay, 
So here's our castle over here. I guess we need to find the volume of that first so that we can decide if she has enough sand. So it is a square pyramid. So we're just going to have one third the base, big B, which is the area of the base times the height. So one third the area of the base would just be 25 times 25. The height is 18. I'm going to type that in my calculator. Actually, I'm going to just look at the key. It's 3,750 inches cubed. Okay. Now, she bought three bags of this. So I'm going to multiply that by three. So will she have enough sand? No. She is going to be short. Not enough sand. Number 12, it says the cylinder to the left contains two congruent hollow cones, okay? If the cylinder height is 20 and its diameter is 14, find the volume of the solid, okay? So it's got two cones that are hollow. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the volume of the entire thing. So not one third, just going to have the base, the area of the base times the height. So that's going to be pi r squared times the height. Um, it tells us our diameter is 14, so that means the radius is 7 and the height is 20. Okay, I'm going to just cheat and look at my key. 3,007, no, no, 3,078 and 76 inches cubed. So that would be the entire cylinder. Now, I have two hollow cones that are going to be in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find one of those cones. Okay, so again, the base is gonna be pi r squared times the height. Now, remember, this height is only going to be half of the cone. So it's only gonna be 10 versus 20 and then everything else will be the same. Hold on. Excuse me, y'all. Okay, so then I'm gonna type this in my calculator. So one third, whoops, sorry. Alpha y equals one third, and then pi times seven squared, times 10. Type that in. That's going to give me 513 and we'll round that to 3. Now this is for one of those cones. The other one that meets it is also going to be exactly the same so I can literally just multiply that by 2. There's no reason for me to do that whole process again. So that's going to be 1026 and 25 inches cubed. Now, the solid would just be the difference between those two. So I would just subtract 3,078.76 minus 1,026.25. That gives me 2,052.51 inches cubed. That would be the uh, volume of the solid piece. All right, that's today's lesson. I did that as quickly as possible, so maybe some more of you would watch this video. You are going to do your homework. That is also over this. If you have any questions, you guys let me know.